let's look at some information you need to know when it comes to energy. All right, first one, temperature. Definition of temperature in chemistry is not how hot or how cold something is. It has to do with measuring the kinetic energy. So there's a direct correlation between temperature and kinetic energy, kinetic energy and temperature. Please keep that in mind. For the second one, energy is absorbed as bonds are broken, energy re is released as bonds are formed. In a balanced equation, you have both. You have bonds being broken and then bonds being formed. But what New York State likes to do is they like to give you one step. So, for example, you might have two oxygen atoms and together they're forming O2. Well, when bonds are formed, energy is released, making it exothermic. Then, of course, the opposite is also true. If I have something like O2, and you see it just breaking apart into O plus O, then, of course, energy had to go in to break that bond, okay, which is endothermic. So, energy is absorbed as bonds are broken, energy is released as bonds are formed. Of course, heat always flows from hot to cold. So, be careful read the question if they give you something where they're asking about energy flow. Remember, energy is flowing out while something else is taking it in. Of course, in number four, heat release during a reaction, and if it's an exothermic process, you're going to see energy as a product. So, for example, if it's something like the formation of water, H2 plus O2 forming H2O, plus energy, or they give you a value, since energy is showing up here as a product, it's exothermic. If energy was on the reactant side, it would be endothermic. Number five is a big one. The heating or cooling curve pretty much shows up on every test. The questions can change, but remember what a heating or cooling curve is. It's a graph where you're looking at changes in temperature of a substance over time. So, let's take a look at one. If I just draw a set of axes, this, of course, is what we would call a heating curve. Over time, the temperature is increasing, so I'm heating something. The opposite, as time goes on, if temperature is going down, then I have a cooling curve. So, anytime you get a heating curve or a cooling curve, what you should do, the first thing is label the phases. So you see two plateaus here. Remember, when you have a phase change, temperature does not change. Since I see two plateaus, then two phase changes, the lowest temperature means I have a substance as a solid. It's going from a solid to a liquid. Then it's a liquid, a liquid to a gas, and then a gas. Label it first with the phase changes before you go ahead and answer questions. Now, remember that if this is the substance melting, when I read the temperature here, that would be the melting point. When I go ahead and I read the temperature here, this would be for the boiling point of the substance. Then, of course, we have those heat equations, which is mentioned here. I got the bonus piece of information, and that is about the calorimetry equations. So the calorimetry equations are on reference table T. They're known here as the heat equations. These equations, these constants rather for these equations on reference table B on the front of the reference tables are the constants for water. So I can relate them right here to my heating or cooling curve. So Q is equal to M C delta T. In order to have a change in temperature, I'm dealing with a substance in one phase only. If we're dealing with water and we're dealing with a specific heat capacity of 4.18, that would be water as a liquid. Any of the others, so the phase change heat of fusion, remember that means melting. This equation is going to be here, and this equation, Q is equal to M. HV for vaporization would be here 
where the liquid is boiling. Notice there's no delta T's, and that is because there is a temperature. The temperature at which something is melting or boiling, though, remains constant. So you're not going to put a temperature into either Q is equal to M H F or Q is equal to M H V. One other thing to, of course, keep in mind with heating or cooling curves, that when you have and I'll use the cooling curve as an example here when you have a change in temperature remember that means that the kinetic energy is also changing however you might also be asked about potential energy if kinetic energy is changing potential energy remains steady in a cooling curve the temperature is going down so the kinetic energy is going down at these three places. When I'm at a plateau and we have the phase changes going on then we say temperature remains constant that means kinetic energy remains constant and it's the potential energy now that's changing. In a cooling curve it's going down. If we were to look at temperature, kinetic, and potential energy for our heating curve let me just take a second and draw a new one since this one's so messy and here it is. All right. So remember that when I have a change in temperature here at these diagonals, temperature in this case is going up. That means kinetic energy is going up, but potential energy remains the same or constant at a plateau. Then we have a phase change temperature is being held steady that means kinetic energy is steady but potential energy is going up so that would be here or here okay that was all six you need to know other information with regards to energy and energy questions go over questions but to start make sure you know these six keep working hard and good luck